Okay, I'm back. It's the One True Watch, otherwise known as Chuck, as we learned in the last one. It's pretty overcast here today, and based on the last video's light completely changing as the sun went behind the clouds so gracefully, I think we're just gonna have pretty even lighting, which is both sad and great. Budgets. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about a very special watch to me that I think is one of the coolest timepieces that has ever been created, and that is the Breitling Navitimer. Now, what makes this such a cool watch for me is the kind of history and the person that it's tied to most, most closely, and that person is Miles Davis. And if you don't know who Miles Davis is, he go read his Wikipedia article. It'll take you two and a half minutes, but if you don't want to do that, I can do it in about 45. So Miles Davis was is one of the most influential jazz artists of all time. And that's like not disputed. If you got into that Wikipedia article, he is listed as a big influence on everybody in jazz. He got to start in the 1940s, and by the late 1940s, he had created this like, what we would consider a mega band. And together they wrote songs that would later become the album known as The Birth of the Cool, which it's in the name. The guy is just cool. He was doing so many cool things. And later he would go on to create the greatest jazz album of all time. Kind of Blue is the best selling jazz album of all time. Now think of all the contemporaries and the big names you've ever heard of like Duke Ellington, John Coltrane, Kenny G. All of those past, his present contemporaries, and the future, decades and decades and decades later, and this is still the best-selling jazz album of all time? If that doesn't give you, like, a barometer of his coolness, I don't know what will. He did create the subgenre within jazz called bebop, which is just, mm, so amazing. If you need to clean your house, wash your car, basically do any chore whatsoever and not be completely pissed about it, just put on a bebop record and I swear to you, you'll be done within like three minutes. If you can't tell, I'm a huge music nerd, a huge jazz nerd, but that is like a video for another time, probably not on the Montreal Watch. Am I gonna make, am I gonna make multiple YouTube accounts? No, no I'm not. That isn't to say he wasn't without fault, but that's not my story to tell. So I'll link in the description one of the multiple documentaries I found that I personally enjoyed and you can kind of get the scope of his life if you want to. Now, if you want to do your own kind of research, you can look at the 8,001 documentaries and, and articles I found, and also a statue in Poland. What have we learned? Miles Davis is super cool. And that's pretty much it. What would be self-proclaimed and actually diagnosed? Diagnosed? awarded, knighted. <laughs> so what would one of the coolest musicians of all time wear? He wore a Breitling Navitimer, the reference 806. So this watch just ranges from about 8K to 10K with the latest reissue being about 8,500. So it'll set you back. But according to Breitling, the reissue or re-edition uh, of the Navitimer is supposed to faithfully capture what that original 1959 Navisheimer was all about. They're supposed to capture the spirit, and for the most part, from what I can see and what I've read and what I've deduced, they did. The only thing that they really updated was the water resistance and the loom, which, you know, don't take a Breitling Navitimer to the beach and you'll be set. Or do take the Breitling Navitimer to the beach because you gotta get that sweet, sweet loom, baby. Gotta get that sweet. And like I said in my first video, I'm not going to go over the specs too much. I link down below to another YouTube or an article that I think really summarizes what the Breitling Navitimer has going on for it. But now I've done a lot of research on watch brands before, like IWC, Rolex, Omega, all of them. And Breitling is one of the few that actually walk the walk and talk the talk. When we talk about a reissue or re-edition of a previous model, they'll kind of contemporize the watch, or if they don't, they kind of lose the spirit of it by changing, you know, little things, little tweaks, which it's fine. Like, I'm not a watchmaker, so I don't know what go what goes in for the in and outs, but they held true to so much of what what the watch was about that I just kind of have to tip my hat to them for, for going the lengths to keep the spirit of the Navitimer alive in this reissue. I can finally talk about why I think the Navitimer is cool and I can tell you that based on my own kind of 
particular preference. And I can talk about how those preferences or preference actually align specifically with the Navitimer, which is a busy watch versus a complex watch. Now, a busy watch to me is a watch that has a lot going on with its dials. A lot. Whether that be text or or gimmicks or a turbillion, which I'm I know I'm mispronouncing and I'm sorry you can, you know, correct me in the comments, it's fine. It's not what I want on my wrist typically. I am kind of a fly under the radar kind of a uh, wrist enthusiast. That's why my first Grail watch was was the Explorer One, and the flashiest, flashiest watch I own is the Tudor Pelagos, and even that is kind of pushing it for me. So you can clearly see where my tastes are. But a complex watch is a watch that has a lot going on on the surface and under the hood, but it also just works on a fundamental level. And what I love about this thing is it just exudes cool, which is where I kind of understand why Miles Davis picked this watch up. It's big, it's in your face, it's flashy, but it's also complex and it has order to the chaos. Just going back to that, the case, the vibe of the smaller numerals that are just all over the place on that dial. It's hard to put into words why it just works for me and why I think it's cool, but, and like I touched on before, it's got history, it's got soul, but I don't mean like heritage in the way that we think of heritage for watches. I just mean like, the Navitimer has character, if that makes any sense. Like you know you're looking at a Navitimer when you see one. This isn't some carefully curated timepiece to appeal to all kinds of collectors like say something like the Tudor Black Bay 58. Sorry for taking shots at Tudor, I'm sorry Tudor. It's not polished or conventionally aesthetically pleasing, but maybe that's one of its points, its own riff. A watch continuously distinguishing itself with each tick. Would I put the Navitimer on my own list for eventual inclusion in my own collection? Yup. Do I think that you should put the Navitimer in your own collection or your own list? Yup. I think it's a cool watch. It's got a lot of heart. It looks kind of crazy, but it just works. If the 806 or the reissue aren't your style, then check out the chronograph because that thing looks amazing. I should actually probably just do a video on chronographs because they're crazy awesome. So that's it. I just wanted to talk about a really cool watch, the Navitimer, and I wanted to talk about a really cool artist, Miles Davis. And now not all of my videos will kind of follow the same I love watches format, but it's just something that I wanted to talk about first and foremost to really kind of set the tone of the channel, but also I just think that watch is freaking cool.